What's up everybody? Welcome back to Cuisant Life. Today I'm in Maryland at Daniel's Dam in uh, Patapsco Valley doing some stock trout fishing. So hopefully we can get on a few. It's quite busy out here with other people. So I don't want to disturb everybody, but hopefully we can get on a few fish. So stay tuned and then we'll see what we can cook up if we catch one. So unfortunately, while filming this video, I somehow managed to mess up the audio and not get it recorded. So let me break down what happened for you guys. I started off using just a pink Berkeley worm with two small split shots that I placed about six inches above the hook. So when I use this rig, I typically cast the worm upstream and just allow it to kind of float naturally down the river um, with the current and let it kind of bounce along the bottom. And so when I'm doing this, I typically get most of my bites on the worm when it begins to kind of swing back towards me at the end of the drift. And for those of you that are curious, I'm using an ultralight ugly stick rod and reel combo here with four pound test. So it's really nothing fancy. You don't really need anything too crazy when you're going trout fishing. Just something that's kind of sensitive. That's why I'm using the ultralight. Plus it makes it super fun to catch them. So. I'll actually include some links down in the description to the gear that I'm using if any of you guys are interested in checking that out for yourself. I know that when I was a beginner I didn't really know to start so hopefully it'll be helpful for some of you guys. So I wasn't really seeing much action on the worm at all so I decided to actually switch over to power bait after a few casts. Now I'm not the biggest fan of power bait but I'm not going to deny the fact that it catches the fish and sometimes you just have to do what's going to work. So when you're using power bait, it's really important to make sure that you're covering the entire hook. Trout are extremely finicky even though they're stocked fish and especially if they've been in here for a few weeks, they really will not bite if they see that hook. So. When I use the power bait, I just kind of use that same technique with the split shots and just kind of let it drift downstream. So here was something interesting. When I started wading back up the river, I actually found this goose egg that was submerged in the water. Uh, I think it might have gotten washed away with all the extra rain that we had. I wasn't really sure what I should do with it, so I just decided it was best to just kind of put it back and leave it where I found it. Hopefully uh, that wasn't too big of a problem. So now this place that I'm fishing is actually pretty interesting. They have a lot of these old structures around from an old mill town that used to be here in the area many, many, many years ago. And this town actually got flooded by the, uh, the water and by the dam here. and these structures that are left behind actually form these really nice deep pockets in the river which usually hold a ton of fish and they kind of stack up here but I gave it a few casts here and honestly I wasn't seeing much action at all so I decided it was probably best to just try and wade back down the river towards these railroad tracks that are further down. So I actually switched to a spinnerbait and we ended up hooking a fish pretty quickly after we moved down there. Um, and then unfortunately, it got off. So I decided to give it a few more casts. Maybe a little bit more than a few. I cast it towards the center there and we hook a fish. Now this time I wasn't going to let this fish get away from me. So I quickly, I pulled out that net real quick and got that fish in the net. There we go. So this here is a rainbow trout 
and this trout is actually a pretty good size one for the ones that they stock here in this area uh, pretty good size eating one sometimes you get them a bit small really too small in my opinion to, to even take home but I guess that's kind of what you get when you have a stocking program now I typically put the stringer on the fish pretty quickly after I've caught it just because I've lost several fish um, uh, when I don't put the stringer on right away so I wouldn't prefer to do this but I'm usually pretty quick to take them out and dispatch them just with a couple of swift hits over the head. So now here I'm fumbling around with the net because I was an idiot and decided to use treble hooks and net the fish. So I spent several minutes trying to get this hook untangled. Uh, really, I wouldn't have done this had I not lost that first fish, but I simply wasn't going to let myself lose another fish. Maybe I should really invest in one of those plastic nets that I see people walking around with. But for now, I'm just going to continue to allow myself to have these sorts of problems and just work with what I've got. So I gave a few more casts with the spinner down here at the end of the river and I really wasn't seeing much action. And then unfortunately, the GoPro also decided to die. So we ended up catching a pretty good brown trout here, at least pretty nice for a stock trout. So we're gonna dispatch this guy and now we have a limit. So we're gonna go home and see what we can cook. you guys we're back in the kitchen now after catching those two trout unfortunately uh, I didn't catch that second one there on the video and the audio kind of cut out a little bit unfortunate but um, I'm gonna show you guys uh, what we're gonna do here with them and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna butterfly them or kind of fillet them out um, just using a small knife um, what we got here is we got the one rainbow trout and then we got the brown trout both very nice for stock trout and that brown trout actually has a lot of orange meat which is really unusual for stock trout so I'm gonna start with just the one and I'm gonna try and do my best to remember how to do this so I'm just gonna take a small knife here and the first thing I'm gonna to want to do is I'm first gonna break that head a little bit just to give myself a little bit more room to work with and then I'm gonna run that knife down here up along the ribs so that I can um, kind of free those from the rest of the fillet. So this is the, the tricky part of this is that you wanna feel where those ribs are and you wanna get in under the ribs. So you're gonna kinda of wanna get under the ribs there and then run your knife as close to the ribs as possible. And then they kind of end there. So that was, that was all right. So we're gonna try and do a little bit better when we move down here. And when you do this, you wanna make sure that you have a really sharp knife. Otherwise, you're just gonna end up completely destroying that meat. And it's not gonna end up very good. So you're just gonna keep doing that all the way down those ribs of that fish there. And once you get a little bit further, you can kind of start to kind of follow that, those ribs and that backbone a little bit. All right. So now that I've freed the one side, I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Um, the one side is a little bit trickier than the other because of the way that you have to let it lay. So we'll do our best here on this side as well to run up along those, those ribs.
All right, now that we have that free, what we're gonna do, you can see those ribs are kind of popping out there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna try and run along the backbone and you should be able to feel it and hear it running along the backbone. And try and make sure that you don't cut all the way through the fish here to the other side. And we're gonna do that on both sides. And you are gonna end up cutting through the pin bones here, but the thing is the pin bones on these are so small that when you cook it, it doesn't really matter. And fortunately for us, what we're cooking today is actually gonna be trout cakes. So if I miss a bunch of the meat, I can actually just go back and use a spoon to take it off of the backbone of the fish, which is what I would recommend for a larger fish anyways. You can kind of use what's left after you fillet it if you didn't get all the meat and use that to make trout cakes. It's super easy to do and super quick. Now what you should be left with is that backbone and you should be able to kind of cut that out here pretty easily, just like that. And then you can pull that off and put it to the side. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna run along that collar and cut that collar out. And you should be able to run along the middle here as well to get that all cut out. And then run along that second collar. And then there's that backbone. We're also gonna run along that and take that out. Now you can do that from the top side as well. And then lastly, you cut those fins off just the same way we did with the collars. And then just like that, you have a nice butterflied trout. Nothing fancy here, just using a spoon to take that meat off as best I can.
So now I've gone ahead and I've chopped that up into some manageable pieces there for our trout cakes. So I've got a couple different things here. What I've got is some onion. So I'm gonna dice that. Just about half an onion, not too much. And then we have some parsley. So I'm just gonna give that a, a rough chop. And the dill as well, just a little bit of dill. We're gonna add a little bit of lemon juice. Now, if you're smart, you make sure that all the seeds don't go in it, like I just did. Get the seeds out of there. Squeeze it over your hand. Just the juice of half a lemon. Nothing too crazy. So, we're gonna add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce or however you pronounce that, just like a teaspoon. And then we'll take a little bit of mayonnaise, probably about a tablespoon of mayonnaise, some salt. Some pepper. And then we're going to add breadcrumbs. Uh, just a little bit, maybe about a quarter of a cup. And then we're gonna add an egg. Okay, now with everything in there, I'm gonna start mixing it. So to me, Mine looks a little bit wet here, so I'm gonna add some more breadcrumbs to help hopefully thicken it up. Now ideally, you'd let this sit in the fridge, but I don't have time for that. So we're going to go ahead and cook it right away. you guys we're all done cooking and we made these nice little bites with these trout cakes I'm gonna go ahead and give it a taste for you guys I've made it before I know it tastes good um, but I'll give you guys a little review why not I mean you can't go wrong with it you're just it's simple, it's tasty, it's quick, and 
easy if you have some leftover trout. Like if you have a big trout, just take the meat off the carcass. I mean, I eat this all day, any day. So yeah, stock trout, still you can make it taste pretty good. Well, anyways, that about wraps it up here. So thank you guys for watching. Um, if you guys liked the video here, consider subscribing and leave me a like. I would really appreciate it. I make lots of this kind of content, lots of stuff with wild food and wild caught food, um, foraging, fermentation, and cooking.